Yeah. So with no further ado, we are super excited to introduce Laura Burkhead. Um, so Laura Bur Burkhead um, has served as a student success coach and academic advisor at Xavier University in Ohio. Um, and she has a lot of experience with really helping students kind of ease into their college transition um, and really thrive in college. So, Laura, you can take it away from here. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Okay. I was a little worried about the um, technology, so I'm happy um, it's working. So, hi everyone. Um, thank you so much uh, to Omar and Benito and Jake for having me. Um, so like you said, my name is Laura Burkhead. Um, I'm currently a student success coach and academic advisor at Xavier University. Um, in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, that's where I did my undergraduate work, and then I got my master's in higher education at Ohio University. Um, so I work with uh, mostly college students, but um, I have some experience working with high school students as well um, in admissions and orientation and things like that. So um, I've worked with a lot of students talking about personal brand and um, how to be, you know, have a good online presence and things like that. So um, especially with all the important work you do um, in advocacy, it's good to have a good personal brand and a good online presence and things like that. Um, so we will go ahead and get started. Um, and if you have any questions, um, I'm new to the WebEx platform, so um, I will do my best to figure out how to answer them in the chat box and things. Um, so like I said, we'll go ahead and get started. So um, when we think of uh, brand and um, you know, we think about logos, we think about companies, um, but a personal brand is the same concept, but it's more about yourself, right? So it's a buzzword. We hear personal brand, you know, what is a personal brand? It's a buzzword we hear a lot of the times, but what does it really mean? Um, so there are a couple of quotes um, from the CEO of Amazon that I pulled because I think it's a good overarching uh, description of what we're going to talk about today. So I'll just read those to you. Um, a personal brand is a total experience of someone having a relationship with who you are and what you represent as an individual. Um, and then one I really think that will hit home and keep this in mind throughout the entire presentation, a brand is what people say about you when you are not in the room. Um, so keep that in mind as we move forward with this presentation. We'll go ahead to the next slide. Um, <laughs> I'm cracking myself up already. Okay, um, so a brand is not a logo. When we think brands, we think logos, right? Um, we think Apple, we think of the Apple logo, we think Target, we think of the bullseye, um, things like that. But a brand is not only the logo. It's a collection of perceptions in the mind of the consumer. And I promise this will relate to the personal brand in a little bit. Um, so, and then another quote, and I promise I'm not only going to be reading off the slides, but a brands are a born experience and reflect your reputation. Um, and every time I hear the word reputation now, I think of Taylor Swift. So I put that in there. Um, so, yeah, perfect. So when we have a positive or a negative experience with a brand, right, it shapes our attitudes and beliefs about said brand. So if you had a really bad experience at Starbucks, you're going to remember that, and you're, that's going to shape your entire opinion of Starbucks, the company in general. Um, so when we think of strong brands, uh, those are brands that are powerful, they're authentic, so they're true to what their values are, what, they, um, what their mission is, they're true to that. Um, they're consistent, so they're consistent across all platforms. So what they do in the store is what they do online, which is what they do offline, et cetera. Um, so I, I wanted to – oh, can we go back, sorry, to the – perfect, yes. Um, so I wanted to talk about these two images right here. Um, so on the left side, you know, you just see some boring old coffee and some water, right? But on the right side, there's a brand. So there's Starbucks and there's Evian, right? So when we hear – when we think of Starbucks, yeah, we think of coffee, right? But we think – when we go to Starbucks, it has a really nice smell, you know, it's 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 a more expensive coffee. It's relaxed. It's reliable. It's consistent. There there's one on every corner these days. Um, and but things we might not know about Starbucks is they're responsible with uh, like their purchasing practices. They're socially ethical. Um, so these are all things that you know contribute to a brand. Um, and so that's why people go to Starbucks for all of those reasons, you know, they can rely on it. And Evian, um, I don't know as much about Evian, but apparently it's a luxurious water brand. 
So when you think of Evian, you think, oh, it's expensive. Apparently a lot of celebrities drink Evian. So it's not just, you know, on the left you see this tap water, it's Evian. It's expensive, it's luxurious, it's fresh spring water, right? So a brand, it really upgrades it. So then we can go to the next slide. So these three logos right here, right, we all can name them, Target, Nike, Apple. When we think just do it, we know Nike, right? So none of these brands treat their, or none of these organizations and companies treat the brands as an afterthought, but rather it differentiates them, it makes them unique. And that's what I think is important to think about with a personal brand. It, what differentiates you from another person, another company? Um, and what, it's what makes you unique. So we can go to the next slide. Um, so I wanted to talk about branding and companies because we can use those same practices that we use for companies when we're talking about our personal brand. So when you're thinking of your personal brand, think of yourself as the product that you're trying to sell to consumers. So I put those same five things, powerful, authentic, consistent, visible, and valuable. So valuable, showing your value, what do you have to offer? Consistent, so you're consistent across all platforms, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, sorry, let me just make sure, let me follow up with my notes. Um, so why should we care about a personal brand? Um, so a personal brand, it allows us to differentiate ourselves from other people, um, especially, you know, a lot of you, if you're going to go through the college admissions process or if you're going through the job search process, you want to be unique. You want to have something that stands out from another person. Um, and that's why kind of having a personal brand um, across many different platforms and in your conversations, your resumes, your interviews, um, it's important to really have that so you stick out to employers or admission counselors and things like that. Um, and like I was an admissions counselor. I read, you know, hundreds of essays. You want the ones that are going to stick out. Um, and then one, oh, sorry, can we go back really quick? Um, thanks. So my, with this slide, one thing I just want you all to remember is if you're not branding yourself, you can be assured someone is doing it for you. So um, in your conversations and your, whoops. Sorry, that was loud. I thought I turned that off. Okay, um, in your conversations, in your interviews, things like that, um, people are always branding you, which is a little scary at times, but I think it's, you know, you want to be authentic and show who you are in all aspects of your life. So if you're authentic to yourself and who you are, it shouldn't be a problem if people are branding you positively, right? Um, so then we can go to the next one. Um, so defining our personal brand, how do we do that? Um, so a personal brand, um, has a lot of different attributes to it, um, but some things that I like to think about in articles I've read. Um, so when you're defining it, what are your goals? So if you're trying to define your personal brand for a career, and I can use myself as an example. Um, my goal is to continue to work in higher education, to work with first-year students, um, to continue to help them through that transition to college. That's a goal of mine, okay? But what is what is my value? So I value uh, communication. I value um, getting to know a student with, through communication, through building relationships. Those are things I value. Um, I value humor and having fun. Um, what am I passionate about? It's kind of all the same. I'm passionate about helping students. I'm passionate about uh, forming relationships. And you can see that the answers to these questions all kind of blend together, and that's what creates that, you know, perfect blend of a personal brand. Um, and what motivates you? What motivates you? My friends, my family, my empl uh, my supervisors, my job. That you know, that is what uh, motivates me. But what makes me remarkable? That's kind of scary to think about. What does make me remarkable? Um, I think I have a lot of knowledge in first year student and programming, and um, I'm a really good communicator. Uh, I like I think I have a okay sense of humor sometimes. You know, <laughs> um, so there's a lot of things that make me unique, and that that's how I portray myself in my personal brand. Um, and so your personal brand can be fluid and evolve. My personal brand today was not my personal brand my freshman or sophomore year of college. Um, and I think that's what happens when, you know, you grow up and you have new experiences. Um, so another important thing to think about, your personal brand isn't changing who you are or self-promoting, but you always want to be consistent and live authentically um, through all aspects of your life. So we'll go to the next slide. Um, so where does my personal brand come from? I mentioned this a little bit, but it become, it comes from your relationships with your family, your friends, your peers, 
um, your employers. How does your resume look? Is it put together at the last minute or is it really thought out? Are there spelling errors? You know, those all things all contribute. Um, conversations, if you're in class and you're giving a presentation or, you know, you don't want to be the rude person in class that always shuts down someone's ideas. You want to be open-minded and listening. Um, and then a big one which I want to talk about, and I think it's important to talk about, is social media and online presence because I think we have to accept a lot of our world is moving towards the digital age and being online and being um, on social media. And I think it's great that we can um, – you know, use social media and technology so much, especially in advocacy work and, and the things we do, uh, but we just have to be careful about it, you know. Um, so just to close with this part, I'm not, sorry, not to close the presentation, but to my next slide to transition, um, what do you want others to think when they hear your name? Um, are you being consistent in all aspects of your life? So really think about that. You know, when I when I was doing this presentation, I was like, wow, what do I want others to think when they hear, you know, they hear your name? So in my job, I want people to think I'm supportive and I'm a listener and I'm caring and compassionate. Um, and so I want my personal brand to reflect that. So we'll go to the next slide. Um, so this is an example of someone whose personal brand got ruined really quick. <laughs> um, so this is Justine, I think it's pronounced Sacco. Um, so she was a, I think, I think she was like a PR executive. Oh yeah, here it is. A PR executive at um, some company, I forget the name. Um, but she was in the air, or she was going to fly to Africa uh, to visit family. Um, and she sent this tweet, uh, going to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding, I'm white. Uh, right before she went in the air. And throughout her 11 hour flight, she became the number one trend on Twitter. Uh, and she, when she landed, she had calls from her friends, family, and her uh, supervisor saying, you're getting fired. So in a matter of one tweet and 11 hours later, her entire career shifted. Her personal brand was completely changed all throughout one tweet. And we're in an age where everything is fast and immediate and quick and things can go viral, and that's scary. So that's why it's important to really think about what you're putting out there on the internet and through social media and on Snapchat and all these fun things we have, but we got to be careful about it because social media is a huge thing that defines our personal brand. It's not the only thing, but it's a huge thing. Um, and I don't know how many of you are like YouTubers, but Logan Paul, um, you know, he was this huge YouTube celebrity and then he posted a stupid video about, I think, like filming someone who had, you know, I think like died by suicide in a forest or something and it just showed no compassion or empathy for that and his whole brand at youtube changed because of one video um and one thing he put out there and i bring that up only to show how important it is to really be cognizant of what you're putting online um and in person in, in anything you're doing in general so um a lot of this what we're talking about is you know our digital identity um so it's this permanent collection of data um, that is available online. So when we're posting a picture or doing a blog or, you know, putting a tweet up, that adds up to our digital identity and our footprint. So we can go to the next one. Um, the next slide. Perfect. So what would happen if I Googled you? Um, I Googled myself for this example. We can go to the next slide. Um, perfect. I hope you can see that okay. Um, so I Googled myself, this is real time. Uh, this is, I didn't cut any or crop anything out. Um, but luckily, nothing too crazy on there. Um, but if you Googled me, Laura Burkhead, you could, here's what you can find out immediately. You can find out I work at Xavier. You can find out I'm from Cincinnati. Um, you could find out, I, you could find my old work Twitter. Um, let's see what else you can find. There's a picture of my grandpa. You know, it's weird. You can see everything. Um, you know, you can see so much when you Google yourself. So I would recommend all of you Googling yourself and see what comes up. Um, and if there's anything you're worried about, maybe get rid of it. Um, so you can kind of have that consistent personal brand online that you do when you're offline as well and in those conversations. Um, so we can go to the next slide. So now what? Um, I think it's important uh, for your personal brand, but especially like your online presence, um, gaining awareness of that. So like I said, Googling yourself 
is definitely good. Um, but audit your current account. Get an inventory of what your accounts look like currently. Um, do you want your accounts uh, private or open? Um, is this personal or professional? So I had a work Twitter for a while um, and a personal one, but I got rid of my uh, work one because I don't really use it that much. And I'm trying to be authentic. And I want, if my students find me on Twitter, I want them to know that's me. And it's the same person that they're seeing when they come into my office. So it's how that personal brand is consistent through online and offline platforms. They really want to hone in on, you know, you want to be authentic and consistent through um, throughout all platforms. Um, and what is my plan if a supervisor or colleague wants to connect with me? Is that a choice you want to make? Do you want to connect with your supervisors and or do you want to wait, you know? So it's just some things you really want to weigh out. Um, and then reflect and set goals on your uh, online presence. So are your posts mostly positive? Are they negative? Are they complaining a lot? Because that can kind of say something about a person. Um, are they neutral? And and I don't want and I, I do want to make a point. Like it's okay to have you know opinionated posts and things like that. But I think it's all a matter of how you do it and being respectful. I just want to say you don't have to be happy go lucky about everything. Um, and then does your activity re represent your life online? Um, and then what is the perception that's being created about you? So it's important to think about those things when you're you know, when you're online and Snapchatting and Instagramming and things like that. Um, I think I just have one more slide left with a closing quote. Um, so I just thought this was a good quote to kind of tie it all together with a bow. Um, I think I was a little fast, sorry if I ended a little early. Um, but we are the CEOs of our own companies, me incorporated. So, you know, it's our important job to be the head marketer for our own brand. So. Uh, we can create our reputations and we can create our personal brands and we just want to be authentic and consistent throughout that. So um, I hope that was helpful. I think that's the end of my presentation, but I'm definitely here to, for questions and things like that. Um, if you have any questions about anything I've mentioned or jobs or anything like that. So.